AP 120, Chapter 1, Topics, Anatomical Directional Terminology and Planes and Sections. So to start off, this person here, this woman, is standing in what's called the anatomical position. Anatomical position, person's facing forward, feet, legs approximately shoulder width apart, feet flat on the floor, arms to the sides with the palms facing forward. That's key. The palms are facing forward toward the front. So whenever we talk about where the relative position of structures in the body are, we always assume the person is in the anatomical position. So when we are comparing the location of different structures of the body, we use uh, a number of anatomical directional terms, and they come in pairs. So the first of these pairs we will talk about is anterior and posterior. Anterior means toward the front of the body. Posterior means toward the back. So the belly is what to the lower back? The belly is anterior to the lower back. The belly is closer to the front of the body than the lower back is. Uh, so, for instance, the back of the head is what to the nose? The back of the head is posterior to the nose. Um, the examples of anterior and posterior are quite a few, so be sure to make sure you understand what those mean. Then we have superior versus inferior. Superior means toward the top or head of the body. Inferior means toward the bottom or feet. So, in this case, the head is what to the chest? The head is superior to the chest. Or uh, the um, urinary bladder is what to the heart? The urinary bladder is inferior to the heart. The urinary bladder is closer to the feet than the heart is. We also have, of course, the left and right sides. So, you imagine there's a midline coming through the body, cutting it in half, giving you approximately equal right side and left side. So when we refer to right and left, whose right and left are we talking about? Well, we are talking about the patient's right and left. We're talking about the person you are observing, their right and their left. So this is the right hand, this is the left hand. Right ear, left ear. So remember, it's the patient, the person you're observing, their right and left. Then, going back to the concept of the midline, running down the middle of the body, uh, we have the terms medial and lateral. Medial means something is closer to the midline, while lateral means something is further away from the midline. So the ear is what to the nose? The ear is lateral to the nose. The ear is further away from the midline than the nose is. The nose is actually on the midline. That is as close to the midline as you can possibly get. Other examples. The uh, hand is what to the thigh. The hand is lateral to the thigh. The hand is further away from the thigh, uh, from the midline than the thigh is. Um, we could also have the uh, left kidney is what to the elbow? The left kidney is medial to the elbow. The left kidney is closer to the midline than the elbow is. Then we have another pair of terms, proximal and distal. Proximal and distal only refer to structures within a single limb. So only when you're talking about two structures within a single limb, do you use proximal and distal? And proximal and distal will replace the terms inferior and superior. Basically, proximal means closer to where the limb attaches to the trunk of the body. Distal means further away from where the limb attaches to the trunk of the body. So the elbow is what to the wrist. The elbow is proximal to the wrist. The elbow is closer to where the limb attaches to the body than the wrist is. Or another example, the foot is what to the knee? The foot is distal 
to the knee, the foot is further away from where uh, the attachment to the trunk of the body is compared to the knee. The knee is closer to where the trunk uh, leg attaches to the trunk of the body. So again, proximal and distal used when you're only talking about structures within one limb, and it replaces superior and inferior. So when we talk about limbs, we can still use anterior posterior. We can still use lateral and medial. We just replace out superior and inferior with proximal and distal. All right, and then we have uh, superficial and deep. Superficial means closer to the surface of the body. Deep means further away from the surface of the body. And this is usually used to talk about things that surround each other or layers of an organ or structure. So for instance, here we have the heart. The heart is what to the skin. The heart is deep to the skin, it is further away from the surface of the body than the skin is. And since the skin is the surface of the body, it is as close as superficial as you can possibly get. All right, with our modern technology, we have uh, developed new ways to look at the body. For instance, we have computerized tomography or CT scan. Computerized tomography uses x-rays emitted in many directions to allow us to get two-dimensional and three-dimensional views of inside the body without actually having to cut open the body. And this is some pretty amazing technology that ends up letting us see the body in slices. To talk about those slices, uh, we have the concepts of planes and sections. So a plane is this imaginary sheet that cuts through the body. And then when you open it up, what you see on the surface where that cut occur is the section. So here's a section of the knee, knee here, that we see because it's been cut through by a plane. Now, we have different kinds of planes that cut the body in different orientations. So for instance, we have the frontal plane. The frontal plane, also known as the coronal plane, the frontal plane cuts through the body, giving us a front piece and a back piece, or an anterior piece and a posterior piece. And so again, we cut a frontal plane through the knee, we can get this frontal section of the knee joint. Then we have the transverse plane. Transverse plane is a sheet that cuts through the body so that we have a top piece and a bottom piece. Uh, so again, transverse plane cuts through the body, giving us a superior piece and an inferior piece. And when we look at where the uh, plane cut through, we get a transverse section giving us a view of that part of the body. In this case, a view of the um, abdominal cavity. And then we have the median or mid-sagittal plane. The mid-sagittal plane cuts through the midline of the body, giving us a right side or piece and a left piece. So a median or mid-sagittal plane cuts through the midline, giving us a right and left pieces. And we open that up and look at where the plane cut through, we can see the mid-sagittal section or median section. So here is a view of the head and neck that's been cut by a mid-sagittal plane. Now, it turns out there's also a parasagittal planes. Parasagittal planes cut through the body to give us a right and left pieces, but those pieces are not um, basically identical or equal. It's away from the midline. So a parasagittal plane is cutting through the body at a area other than the midline, giving us a right and left piece that are unequal. And that is it for this part of the lecture.